Yeah, let's do it. Hi. Uh, today's episode's going to be a little bit different than other episodes. Nathan and I have been learning about the Sabbath through um, one of our friends in our missional community that wrote this really cute little guide called the Sabbath Guide. Um, that's just like a workbook on how to Sabbath. Sabbath is just a day of rest. Um, it's something that God designed for us and something that God himself modeled for us as well. Um, and Sabbath was something that was practiced by the Jewish people for a really long time before Jesus came. It's still practiced by the Jewish people and still practiced in certain parts of the Christian church. I think it depends on denomination and how much emphasis they put on the Sabbath. Um, but it's something that God has really created for all of us. And so it's something he invites us to partake in. Um, it's, yeah, really just a day of rest, a day to reflect on God's word and God's promises and not do work, do things that bring you joy and peace. And um, yeah, yeah, that's the Sabbath. Uh, so we started that guide last weekend and... We practiced our first Sabbath ever last weekend, and it was really nice, um, truly restful, and we just want to continue that. So today is Friday the 24th, which is like the start of the Labor Day weekend, and we have some family coming into town, which means that we're going to be pretty busy the rest of the weekend, uh, so we won't be able to record like we usually can, or Sabbath on Saturday like we usually do. So we decided to have today be our Sabbath. Um, and not that this podcast feels like work, but going through the, not script, but notes that we had prepared for this next episode does feel like a lot of work <laughs> mm. um, just because there's so much content there. Yeah. So um, instead of doing that, we're going to take a break. And this is like a just fun episode where Nathan and I are going to ask each other questions. He doesn't know what questions I'm asking him. I don't know what questions he's asking me. We have this little deck of cards called TBH deck. Um, and we both just went through the deck and picked out cards to ask each other. So that's what this episode is going to be. We're just going to be having fun. But also some of these are pretty serious. Um, so I don't know what he picked. Um, and... Some I mean, lighthearted ones. I pick some lighthearted ones. Some nice. fun ones. Okay. Yeah. And the the name of the podcast is Bring to Light. So I also wanted to just touch on what that means. Um, like as a Christian, I think there are multiple definitions to that phrase, bring to light. Um, what comes to mind when you hear that, baby? Mm, I think you're right there. A lot of things there, but I think part of it bring to light is, you know, our goal here is to share the gospel. That's bringing things to light that aren't obvious. I think that's a big one. I think there's a lot of misconception, and that was really my goal behind the podcast as well. Uh, bringing to light some harder conversations. I think that's that's our goal. Is yeah, it's hard to be vulnerable. It's even hard for me to be vulnerable on here. And I think part of it is working through that, um, but also just sharing, you know, sharing with our friends and community, whoever's listening, um, maybe having some of those harder discussions around different things that are in scripture, different things that come up in society and how we can navigate through those together. Yeah. Different things that we go through as human beings, mm -hmm. um, as children of God. Yeah, so I think what you're, what you're trying to say is that we're literally bringing difficult conversations into the light. Um, that's one way to look at the name of the podcast. I think another one is bringing people out of the darkness into the light, mm -hmm. meaning introducing people to the gospel, um, to God's word, to this way of living that Jesus calls us to. Mm -hmm. um, so I would definitely say that I was pulled out, that Jesus pulled me out of the darkness into the light mm -hmm. um, through his salvation, my salvation through him. 
Uh, so that's another way to think about bring to light and the practice of repentance and mm. um, just confessing to people in our community that we trust and love and like bringing our sin into the light, which like that's not what this podcast is. We're not like here to just talk about our sin, but I mean, kind of that's what we're doing by, you know, being vulnerable and talking about how human we are and how we are all sinners. Um, I don't know if that's something that we've covered yet, but um yeah, for anyone that's listening, like we are, we're just like you. <laughs> we're no mm-hmm. different. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's the main thing that comes to mind when I think of bring to light. It really is in every way, just just bringing things to light because when sin stays in the darkness, when we can't be vulnerable and we can't openly share with others, when we have secrets, like that's when sin just like grows and grows and gets scarier. And uh, that's not what we're called. That's not what God calls us to to live in. That's not a good way to live. We can jump into the questions and we'll see what comes to light. Um, Nathan and I know quite a lot about each other, so I doubt there will be any surprises, um, but maybe for y'all listening. So You want to go first? <laughs> I guess so. Um Okay. If you could relive your life, what would you have done differently? Hmm. I think we talked about this on the last episode already, but there are moments where I I wish I had turned to my Bible more um, in seasons of struggle and let God speak to me that way. It's something that I just didn't I didn't think of in the moment. It was hard for me to think of that as the answer when I was, you know, going through seasons of suffering. So yeah, definitely would have, if I could change something, it would be to go to scripture as like more of an instinct for Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Your turn. Uh, where do you find (laughs) them? That was so fast. Go ahead. (laughs) Where do you find the most joy in your days? I've already talked about this as well. Um, Mm. I find joy in very mundane things like hugging Kahlua, hugging Nathan, um, sitting in the yard. I find a lot of joy in prayer, Um, grounding, which just means like standing barefoot in our backyard and enjoying the nature around me and hearing the birds sing and looking up at the sky, getting sun, um, really like plain, simple, free things bring me the most joy. Um, Mm. Listening to music while I clean. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Nothing crazy. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Who is someone in your life that you'd like to become closer to? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, so I picked it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we joined an MC kind of recently. So Bible study, missional community. Um, and I have like what's known as an LTG partner just means like someone that you meet up with regularly to talk through what you struggle with and really guide each other. Um, and work through those problems. So, um, it's kind of, kind of new, like we've only been meeting for a few months. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, for us getting to know each other better and, uh, you know, working through those sin patterns and struggles together. So, yeah. Uh, why would you like to become closer to this person? Um, I think he's a really like he's a really good brother in Christ. Like he's a great example. Um, he's a cool dude too. Yeah. He's really chill. We also have the same birthday, which is kind of a weird, <laughs> a weird synchronicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah. Really cool dude. Um, just knows how to love people really well. And, uh, you know, I'm hope I pick up on some, on some of that as well. Yeah. Cute. Um, what's your favorite place in the world and what do you love about this place? Hmm. 
All of my answers are going to be so boring <laughs> because I love our house. Like, I I don't know. Like, I, maybe you can be more specific. Like, place I've traveled to. Yeah. Like, yeah. What's the, okay. what's the best place you've traveled to? Okay. Uh, favorite place I've traveled to and why? Mm -hmm. Hawaii for sure. Mm -hmm. um, because it's sunny and there are rainbows all the time and you can find every kind of tree there. Like you see like pine trees that are usually in the forest, but they're in the jungle as well next to tropical plants like monsteras and stuff. And mm. um, it's just really beautiful. There's so much life. The water is really blue and crystal clear. Um, I love the beach. I love mm. the sand. I love the sun. <laughs> um, and summer, summer all the time. <laughs> yes, and yeah, I love, I love the heat. Um, can't get enough of it. And uh, the culture in Hawaii is just very different from city life. Um, mm. And I'm talking specifically about North Shore, Oahu. That's where we've gone to a couple of times on vacation and um, people are just really laid back. Everyone lives in a swimsuit and flip-flops. Um, yeah, just very minimal living. And it, it seems like everyone there just cares about spending time with their family and their community and spending time outside and mm -hmm. in God's beautiful creation. So mm -hmm. that's why I love Hawaii. I agree. And all the fresh fruit and coffee. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, what habits or traits in other people do you love? I mean, I, I like when people are really warm and welcoming. Like they acknowledge you and you can tell like they care about you. I think that's one of the biggest ones for me. Hmm. Um, just warm personalities. Um, did you say five traits? What habits or traits in what other people do you love? Um, I really respect people who have great discipline that's another one uh, so that's more on the habit side i guess that's a trait discipline's a trait um but that manifests through a bunch of habits you know people who are really committed to what they're working on and or just committed to where they want to be and mm -hmm. yeah yeah discipline and like positive you know warm why is that is the second part of the question? Um, for the first one, I think it's just, it shows that they love people and, you mm. know, are in a good place themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you can really tell when it's genuine. I guess that's what I mean is like genuine warmth from people. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's something that, you know, I want to be more like that. I'm not always super bubbly, but. Um, no one's always super bubbly. Yeah. I think but, it's just about your posture towards someone, right? Like, mm -hmm. it seems like you're trying to say, like, you love people that are really open mm -hmm. and welcoming, which yeah. I'm sure takes a lot of work to get mm -hmm. to a place where you're, like, so comfortable with yourself that you're welcoming to other people mm -hmm. in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the just one side, that's just something that I want to be stronger in. It's like, being more strict with your routine and being disciplined in my study of the word. I, I think that in general, these are things that will help me be better. It's just easier to lean into comfort. And so I'm trying to trying to lean more into the discipline side, even though it's definitely more challenging. Mm -hmm. So really respect people who have, have that figured out. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. As a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, I think I wanted to be a vet. Okay, why? Why were you interested in? in <laughs> because I love animals so much. Um, I love all of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think the average person would say like, oh yeah, I love dogs, I love cats, I love animals, but I think I'm on like a different level. Like I would pay someone to let me pet their pet dog. Pet that dog. <laughs> yeah, I can't, <laughs> can't pet that dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love dogs. I love cats. I love raccoons. I love ducks. I had a pet duck growing up. Um, my family and I had a pet duck growing up. We had a lot of dogs. We had some cats. 
I just love all animals. In the future, I would love to have more German shepherds and I would love to have donkeys and chickens and ducks. Mm. Um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, donkeys are great. Mm-hmm. So I, I wanted to be a vet. Um, and then I don't remember when that dream shattered. Um, mm. Oh, I think because I realized that like no healthy pet is coming into the vet. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to put dogs down. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. want to see animals hurting and suffering. So I said, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, your turn. Mm-hmm. What would you say now to someone who hurt you in the past? It's okay. Like <laughs> that's all good, man. It's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I forgive you. I don't know. It's uh Do you forgive them? Whoever's coming to mind? It's not, there's no one in particular in mind, but uh, Okay. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> good. Forgive and forget. Yeah. Um which I think is really hard to do if mm. you don't have the Holy Spirit to help you. Mm-hmm. Um, Not I, a natural tendency. It's like no. easier to hold a grudge. For sure. But harder on you on the long run. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, your turn. Cool. Uh, it says flow is a mental state where you're fully immersed in an activity you enjoy and you lose track of time. What activities put you into a flow state? Um, cleaning and listening to music puts me into a flow state. I lose track of time. I was going to say working out, but that's not true. Um, I'm usually like, how much, how much time is left in dying? Um, drawing on my iPad, like illustrating, mm-hmm. coloring things in. I lose track of time. Yeah, that's true. Um... I lose track of time when I'm hanging out with friends and socializing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm put into a healthy, engaged flow state. Um, I guess that's, I don't know. What is is a flow state? What did it say? Um, It says flow is a... I think of work when you Mm. say flow state, you know, like... I mean, I think it could be any activity, like any... Typically creative activity, but yeah, sometimes it could be work related. I feel like I'm in that flow state every day. I just Hmm. get into my routine, Mm -hmm. my regular rhythms. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one's kind of long. If you could live out five other imaginary lives and be slash do anything in the world, what would you be or do? In each of the five lives? I guess so. Like five so, distinct things. One more time. If you could live out five other imaginary lives and be slash do anything in the world, what would you be or do? Hmm. So is it saying what would you be or do for five different lives? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's a lot. That's a lot to think of. Um, <laughs> one thing that comes to mind. Um, imaginary is what it said. Really like, uh, really like riding my dirt bike, so... If I uh, like didn't have to worry about a career and making money, like I'd love to just like do motocross for fun. I don't know. Don't they get paid well? I mean, if you're really good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might I'm not be that good. You might be. You're really good at it. Maybe everything. in that other life, I might be that good. Uh huh. <laughs> be cool. What else? Um, a chef. Mm, mm-hmm. You're already doing that. Well, you not are. As a career. You're my yeah. chef. Yeah. <laughs> you cook for us. Uh huh. Um, I think that's all I got. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, next one. How has your life evolved over the past three months? Oh, that's a big one. So much has happened since I turned 27 in March. That's a really hard question because there are just so many things. I don't. I don't know if anything. From your from your perspective, as my husband, what have been the things that have stuck out to you? Maybe about big one is just your relationship with God. I've seen your prayer life, prayer routine grow yeah. a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, we got baptized, which is another oh, one. We did. I don't think we've talked about that in an episode yet. Yeah. But um, we were baptized on Easter this year, so mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was beautiful. 
Yeah. And I had the women's retreat in March mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we got baptized on Easter. So yeah, I guess things kind of did speed up in the last three months. I've just seen a lot of God's love and goodness um, for me in the last three months since following him. Um, He's really increased my faith rather quickly. And this podcast has been something new as well um, Mm. that we're growing through. Yeah, I mean, I through God's grace, I I feel like I've been. I don't even remember what the question was anymore. What was the question? <laughs> um, how has your life evolved over the past three months? Yeah, because of God's grace over the last three months, my life has evolved um, into something really beautiful and peaceful and restful. I'm in the pro- I'm in the process of learning how to fully let go and surrender, um, which is not easy. But I feel like every day it feels a little bit easier. Hmm. And um, yeah, I I don't it, it's I feel like the answer to that question could be multiple episodes that we could get into, um, different topics that we could get into. But yeah, my life's evolved a lot and mostly in in my faith and in following Jesus and getting to know him um and in our marriage too like we've we've had a lot of things that we've overcome together and yeah we've been we've been growing a lot uh Jesus has been hard at work in both mm-hmm. of us <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah vague answers but I, I really can't get into anything without it mm-hmm. taking forever <laughs> yeah Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Um, <laughs> what emotion is the hardest for you to express? No, what are some emotions? Let me, let me think. That's through. a good question. <laughs> um, I think it's easy for you to express joy. It's easy for you to express gratitude towards something or someone. It's easy for you to express anger. It's easy for, and for most of us, not just you, um, it's easy for us to express uh, like disappointment towards something. Um, yeah. I don't know what's, what would be the hardest, I don't know really. Um, what emotion is the hardest for you to express? I think common ones that are hard for people to express are maybe like, compassion for other people mm-hmm. or maybe like empathy like it's hard for other people to relate mm-hmm. through what someone else may be going through if it's unlike anything they've ever gone through mm-hmm. um yeah probably that one yeah probably empathy the hard part there for me is i don't know what it's like and so i can't easily put myself in someone else's shoes yeah um i mean like i can give compassion and maybe sympathy is that where you like feel bad for someone you can do that but (laughs) yeah I I have a hard time on the empathy aspect because it's really hard for me to like take myself out of my body and Mm -hmm. imagine what it'd be like to be in someone else's shoes you know I Mm -hmm. not something that comes easy for me at all why do you think that is it's the second part of the question I think part of that maybe comes down to like how I was raised I don't know maybe my parents but yeah part of it too I'm just you know I'm more on the logical side as an engineer and mm-hmm. yeah less of a I feeler just, yeah a little bit yeah less on the feeling I mean I have all those feelings and I show them all it's just yeah. empathy is probably the one that it's really hard for me to you know think about it from someone else's perspective that's yeah. the hard part um, for sure I can only easily relate thing like if it's sort of related to something i've been through then i then it's way easier for me yeah yeah that makes sense yeah um what were you like as a child what did you love to do um well it's hard to answer that question because 
like I don't have like an outsider's perspective of what I was. I I, I, I picked this one because I thought I I thought you had this in the bag. We were just talking <laughs> about this earlier, um, um, how you love to sing as a kid, like you were singing all the time. Yeah, I only have like vague memories of my childhood to look back on. What I was trying to say was that my perspective of myself might not be true because mm. it's me, you know? Yeah, but you, you have home videos, which is something okay. that's nice that yeah. I don't I don't know if we have any home videos when I was a kid. Like I don't think yeah. they've been converted and they're probably lost somewhere, you know? So yeah. the fact that you have home videos that have been digitized, like, you know, you're able to go back and see that, which is really cool. Yeah, that's true. My mom growing up was really into photography and videography and she always had her little camcorder in her hand. And so my mom was just always the lady behind the camera and she would record like our everyday lives, like very boring things. And um, yeah, she just had like a ton of tapes stored up that she gave to my sister um, a couple of years ago when my mom moved to Mexico and um, my sister gave those tapes to me um, this last year for me to figure out like how I can maybe put them on CD CDs or not really a thing anymore. And I mean, these are old, like these were recorded in the very early nineties. I think mm -hmm. 91 was the earliest one. And then all the way to like 2006 were most of the tapes. And, um, thankfully Nathan's really tech savvy and he was able to help me and figure out how I can get the recordings on my laptop. So I was able to I watched all of the footage from all of the tapes that my sister um, thankfully kept for us. And it was really cool to see, um, like to have actual proof of what my childhood was like and my parents' interactions with me when I was a baby, which, yeah, I think if I hadn't seen that, I, I would still believe a lot of lies that I believed about my childhood um, before watching the videos. But um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool and unique, and I'm so thankful that my mom kept those and so thankful for my sister that kept those and shared them with me. Um, mm. In the videos, <laughs> um, I'm pretty annoying. Like, I, maybe that's just how kids are. <laughs> um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah I, was, I was really annoying, really talkative, which I remember that being a problem in school. Um, we had these little, like, pockets on the wall out of manila paper and if you got in trouble you would have to go put like a popsicle stick in your pocket and I don't remember what would happen if you had a certain number but I was constantly having to go put sticks in my little pocket thingy because I talked a lot um all the time so I yeah I was a chatterbox um what was the second part of the question like what were the things that I enjoyed doing uh what were you like as a child what did you love to do I loved photography, so my friends and I would like have photo shoots in the backyard and we would create like stop motion videos to music. I've, I've loved music since day one because both of my parents are huge. Um, th they both just have really good taste in music and listen to all genres. Um, so I grew up listening to all the stuff they've been listening to for their entire lives. Um, so I liked listening to music. I really liked dancing and singing, not dancing like at school, like just being silly in my room and singing songs. Um, I really liked singing a lot, lots of singing in the home videos. That's very awkward and weird, but I was having fun. Um, I wasn't shy at all. Like I was, if, if you watch those videos, like I had so much confidence and I, like I would like confidently tell people like I want to be famous, I want to be a singer, like I want all cameras on me. Like I was so different from how I am now. I don't know why you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Yeah, because it's funny. That's very different. It's super different. Yeah. Like I, I didn't, I would have never thought that that confidence would have gone away or I, I don't, I don't know. I guess that's kind of just like what happens when you get older is you believe things that aren't true or, you know, something mm -hmm. embarrassing happens or someone tells you that you can't do something or that someone's better at the thing. I don't know what happened. Um, haven't dug back <laughs> into my mm -hmm. subconscious or, to think through that, but, um, yeah, I, I was very outgoing, uh, 
I was also really mean. Like in school, I was um, not the mean girl, but like I was, I was really mean and sassy and rude. And um, that probably came from having parents that were divorced and were really unkind to each other. Um, mm -hmm. So I wasn't like, I'm not a fan of that version of me at all. Um, mm -hmm. I wasn't, I, someone needed to humble me and I guess that's what happened. So <laughs> maybe that's why I'm not, you know, I don't have a big head anymore, which is good. I guess mm -hmm. I, I do in some areas, right? I, I think, I'm not saying that I don't need humbling still. I do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I was like. And I liked doing really basic girly things like singing, dancing, um, playing with my sister and my cousins, listening to music. What do you feel life has been trying to teach you lately? I think a big one is just lean more into community, like having really good relationships. I think both in brotherhood, but in larger community as well. Um, and I think part of that is like, for a really long time, I had a lot of trust issues. And I think I'm just working through that, you know, learning to learning to trust people and be more vulnerable, um, which has helped me develop deeper relationships with, um, with the people in my life. So I think that's the biggest one uh, over the last couple of years. It's kind of recurring and something I've just been working through. Mm -hmm. What are the signs that make you think this way? What do you mean? The question was, what do you feel life has been trying to teach you lately? Mm -hmm. And then what are the signs that make you think this way? That's a weird second question. Yeah, let's skip that. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um... Maybe like one, one more and then we'll be done. Okay, cool. Um, what book, movie, or TV show is your guilty pleasure and why? Mm. I have a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of guilty pleasures. Yes. Um, I really like like early 90s movies that are really like raunchy and inappropriate, like Bring mm. It On mm. and Mean Girls. Mean mm. Girls was not early 90s, but Mean Girls was like the last movie that had that feel mm. of like just com like comedy stupid good music good good actors um yeah bring it on as a a big guilty pleasure because it really has zero depth <laughs> but it's really funny and weird and it's about cheerleading only the first one i haven't seen the other ones um it really is just pure entertainment and it's also a guilty pleasure because they're super inappropriate um mm -hmm. but i think also mostly harmless fun too yeah they were better at having fun yeah in the 90s with movies true and that's true yeah mm -hmm. also guilty pleasure because most of the things said in those movies like would get someone canceled today. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. not why I like them, but I'm just saying like that is why I feel guilty is because they are very uh mm -hmm. yeah, they're outdated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to answer that question? Does anything come to mind? Um I mean we're kind of re we're rewatching it for fun, so it's new probably new girl is why one of is those. Why is like a guilty pleasure? Um, New Girl's amazing. I was like, <laughs> I was embarrassed um, about New Girl at first because I thought it was like a really girly show. Mm. Um, but then once I watched it, I realized it was hilarious. And Men can like girly things. I know, I know. Yeah. I just... <laughs> and it's yeah. about three dude roommates. There's one girl. Mm. Yeah. I guess for the same reason, like it can be raunchy at times. and Yeah. Um, so guilty pleasure, but it is hilarious. It's a really great show, and they're very clever. Uh, I, just, I think the jokes are really clever. Yeah. Um, yeah, New Girl's top-notch comedy. Um, ch -ch -ch. Any other fun questions you want to ask me? Um, yeah, here's one. If you could have a conversation with one person in the world, who would it be and why? Jesus. Uh, one person in the world. In the world, Jesus is in the world, not in the flesh. Okay. 
<laughs> a person in the flesh <laughs> right now. Okay. That- Who would you want to talk to? Um, just like, is there more to say the question again? I'm sorry. If you could have a conversation with one person in the world, who would it be and why? A conversation. Okay. Um, I don't think there's any one person that like I can't have a conversation with that I want to have a conversation with. Well, not everyone's accessible. Like you can't just like call someone up and say, Hey, you know, and just chat. It, it means like maybe there's someone famous or I have zero desire to talk to famous okay. people. We'll skip this. No, one this is a good, this, I don't think we should <laughs> skip it. I, I don't know. There's no one in the world that you'd want to have a conversation with that you don't know. <laughs> that I don't know. Um, I kind of, I don't know her. Um, I guess I was trying to, I asked you to repeat the question again because I didn't know if it was like, if you had one hour with someone or, you know, like how long, I guess it's a full conversation. You pick, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, no one famous. Um, the only person that's coming to mind is one of the founders of Branch Basics, Allison. Hmm. Um, she's a mom. You've already had a conversation with her. I I have had conversations We're with her. Scratch all of this. No, no. Yes. Why? It's, if you could have a conversation with with one person, like someone you've never talked to, did it say that? You Does don't it know. say that? No, but that's what it means. <laughs> How do you that's what know? It means. How do you know? Like a typical answer here would be like Obama. Oh, Mich- Obama, yeah, yeah. yeah, Michelle Obama. I have or- no desire to talk to people that are like so far removed from reality. I don't. You wouldn't want to talk to RFK Jr. You wouldn't want no. to talk to no a politician. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's just scra- let's scratch this question. No, I'm not yeah. scratching it. I I I stick with what I was going to say. I haven't been able to have a one-on-one conversation with Allison from Branch Yeah, Basics. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was able to ask her one question. I would want to have a conversation with her and ask her about like how she came to know God and mm. and what her life, what her health journey was like. Like I, I've, I've listened to this woman speak on multiple podcasts mm. and I've met her a couple of times at health-related events and Branch Basics pop-ups, but I haven't had the chance to like sit down and have a conversation with her and like really get, to know her, you know? Mm-hmm. So I would pick her. I I can't, I really can't. I don't follow anyone that's famous besides Jesus. <laughs> you uh, follow? Oh, yeah. I thought you went on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you follow Jesus? And Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't. Do you have a famous person that you would want to talk to? I Like, I guess, okay, I could say like Joe Rogan or something. Mm. Like Joe Rogan has a wealth of knowledge. If I had to pick one famous person, it might be Joe Rogan. That's just the first person that comes to my mind. Mm. Because he is a really curious, thoughtful man, open-minded, uh, has met a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um from all different spaces and Mm -hmm. uh yeah i think it'd be really i think i'd be really intimidated to talk to him but Mm. yeah maybe Mm. Mm. i would probably pick pick alex jones because it would be the most wild conversation i'd ever have in my (laughs) life the most entertaining and wild conversation i think Uh, (laughs) (laughs) i was gonna say i think you agree with them on a couple of things (laughs) don't say that (laughs) Hey, um, he's not. I just think it would be really entertaining. He's not wrong about everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good answer. Okay, yeah. Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. Um, mm. We might get canceled for that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't believe in cancel culture, y'all, just by the way. Okay, that was good. All right, well, I guess we'll wrap it up there. And Yeah, thanks for joining us on our tbh deck date episode and um yeah we'll be back next week um with our regular programming today we just wanted to take it easy and 
not have to look at notes and just free flow and ask each other fun questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, y'all. We love y'all. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.